Thank you, everybody, for, for joining us today here. Um, for those that don't know, my name is Adam Simmons, um, and I have the uh, second year in a row honor of emceeing the uh, annual Star Coalition Awards Ceremony. So, um, you know, hopefully I, I, I did an okay job last year. Um, th for those that this is the first time, this is an opportunity for us to reflect on the past year and honor some members of our community um, that have, um, you know, really stepped out and, and, and doing so. Um, we'd like to acknowledge some of the work that they've done. And um, I think we've got everybody on mute now. So um, we're going to start things out here today um, by having a little bit of an overview from the Star Coalition. Uh, Eric is going to speak through some of the accomplishments in 2023 and some of the things that we'll be looking forward to in 2024. Uh, and then the way that we do the actual awards is uh, similar to the master ceremony and the green jacket. And maybe next year we'll start incorporating sparkly jackets for everybody. Uh, we'll allow the award recipients from last year to introduce um, the 2023 uh, award winners for this year. So great opportunity to uh, hand off uh, the awards. So with that, I'll hand things over to Erica that will speak about the Star Coalition, and uh, then we'll go into the award ceremony. All right, Erica. Great. Thank you, Adam. Um, let me remove the spotlight from you so we can do a speaker view. Hmm. So I feel like I'm in speaker view, but oh, okay, here we go. Um, hi, everybody. I don't know how to remove you from the spotlight. <laughs> okay. So hi, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us. This has been a, you know, it's been a crazy year. It's been a great year. Um, just wanted to give you a quick update on what's going on with the Star Coalition um, as, as more people trickle in here. Um, a few of you have met Katerina, who is actually, she's new with the Star Coalition. She's been here about a month and a half or so, but she's with her mom at the hospital at the moment. So if you haven't had the pleasure yet of meeting Katerina, I'm sure you'll meet her next year. Um, she's been helping with the Certified Sites Community Outreach and the certification work. Um, so certified sites, we've got a few new members, but we're always looking to engage more sites. And we are all stronger together, so please encourage your colleagues to get certified and join the STAR community. Uh, we're also always looking for research ambassadors, who are the trial volunteers that are engaged on a sort of elevated level. Uh, the objective is to help promote the clinical research, but the research ambassadors themselves feel like more, a more important part of the research program, which obviously supports the retention in any um, study that they're a part of. Um, the, star, the auditory hallucination simulation has been getting a lot of attention with various psychiatric and nursing college programs leasing it for their students, which is awesome, I think. Um, and it's one of the perks of your certification. So um, if you're certified or if you're a, a STAR member, please do reach out because that is available for you to use with your staff. Um, Next, the advocacy board has been going strong. I don't know if you um, saw the tip sheet for navigating the holiday blues um, that they put out for the holidays, but we included that in our December newsletter. Um, and speaking of newsletters, they have been getting um, right around a 50% open rate, so we're really happy about that. Thank you all for reading your newsletters um, and staying involved. Um, We've been getting some good feedback, but please do keep sending in your items so that we can make sure that everybody's included in that. Um, diversity work group is on a bit of a break, but we have been working behind the scenes on a template for members to use in response to the study requirements for a DEI action plan. It includes all of the elements listed on the FDA's guidance doc, so we're really excited to wrap that up so that we can have that to you um, for January. Um, we also wanted to mention, oh, I wanted to mention that the community of practice for community mental health centers. Um, so our community of practice has been operational and meeting monthly um, over the past uh, seven months. Um, the objective is to educate the community mental health centers on the safety and benefits of including research in their sort of care continuum. Um, I'm looking forward to having some conversations with you 
with some of you guys um, about how we can better bridge the gap between the um, CMHCs and, and research. Uh, and just a last note, um, thank you guys all. Thank you guys all so much for all the work that you're doing um, on behalf of all the people living with mental illnesses. Um, I am so honored and grateful to be part of this amazing community. So thank you so much. And on with the show. Adam, back to you. All right. Now we're going to get into the fun. The The awards um, will uh, be uh, handed out virtual, but, um, you know, real um, physical awards will be forthcoming. So as I mentioned, um, you know, we're going to start things out here with the Advocate of the Year Award. Um, thank you to all of the advocates for everything that you do. Um, there's also been a, a large number of, of, you know, new advocacy organizations that have gotten involved with the Star Coalition. So it's been a pleasure to learn more about the, the work that they're doing. Um, and of course, you know, we thank them so much for their support of research and, and being a member of this, this coalition, which um, is really all about, you know, bringing research and new therapies to, to patients. So um, last year's Advocate of the Year um, was the National uh, Federation of Families. And so we have Dana Asby here, who is the Certification Manager and Project Specialist from the National Federation of Families that will be presenting the 2023 uh, Advocate of the Year Award. So uh, Dana, on to you. Thank you so much, Adam and Erica. The National Federation of Families purpose is to advocate for families of children with mental health and substance use concerns and support them in advocating for their children and for family-driven systems. So being recognized as the Star Advocate of the Year for 2023, 2023 was really a great honor. Um, the importance of acceptance of behavioral health challenges and the advocacy that NFF does on that topic to recognize to be recognized by such a great organization as STAR really made us feel excited to be in this work together with STAR and with the amazing partners on the advocacy board. We really do look forward to continuing to partner and to learn more about the research that all of these great organizations are doing and the resources they're providing and um, just really lifting up these advocates. Um, we are so thankful and grateful, and we're excited to bestow this honor for the 2024 Star Advocate to Rural Minds. Rural Minds is dedicated to being an advocate for mental health in rural America. They provide essential mental health information and resources to communities that often have limited access to support. They have a really strong commitment to education and awareness and partner with lots of other rural organizations, bridging the gap in the mental health services in rural areas, offering guidance and values um, and resources to individuals to promote the importance of mental well-being and to also promote a culture of acceptance and support. So this is their first year in the STAR Coalition. And they've been really consistent and active participating in the advocacy board. They've been enthusiastic about collaborating with other coalition members and dedicated to building a greater awareness of not only the limited access to mental health services, but also the cultural differences that are faced by people living in rural America. For instance, compared to people who live in urban areas, rural Americans experience higher rates of depression and suicide but are less likely to access mental health services. But Rural Minds brings education and hope to those in rural America through webinar series, a resilience program um, that really helps recognize the self-reliance that rural Americans feel is a strength for confronting problems. Rural Minds work gives people who live in rural America mental health and information and resources they need to become a part of the solution, encouraging the courageous conversations about mental illness and suicide that must be heard, and enlisting people to serve as trusted sources of reliable information to help their family, friends, and rural community. Accepting the award on behalf of Rural Minds, 
is executive director and board member, Chuck Strand. Congratulations, Chuck. Thank you, Dana. Um, on behalf of the Rural Minds team, I'd like to express our sincere appreciation for this award and the recognition for the work that we are doing through Rural Minds to help people in rural communities across the country who face unique barriers and challenges to mental health. Rural Minds founder and chairman Jeff Winton was planning to also be here, but unfortunately he's not able to join us and sends his regrets. Rural Minds was established just a little more than two years ago in response to the death by suicide of Jeff's nephew, Brooks. Immediately following the, the tragedy, uh, that tragedy, Jeff and his family made the courageous decision to talk openly in their rural farming community to confront the stigma and the silence surrounding mental illness, which led to Brooks dying by suicide unexpectedly. The <clears throat> hope was to help others recognize the importance of talking about mental illness, which is the first step to diagnosis and treatment to help a person be their best self. We know that the stigma of mental illness is especially prevalent in rural communities, and it has a negative impact on several fronts. It can be a barrier to family discussions about a genetic predisposition to a mental illness. It can inhibit someone from seeking a diagnosis and treatment for mental illness, and persistent stigma and inadequate funding have been barriers to mental health clinical research. Thanks to the collaboration with individuals and partner organizations with a shared goal, Rural Minds is developing information and resources to confront the mental health challenges in rural America and serves as a platform for people to share their experience with overcoming barriers and effectively managing a mental illness in a rural community. This gives real hope to others who may be struggling in silence and it breaks down the stigma that surrounds rural mental health. In addition to thanking the STAR Coalition and all of you, our fellow mental health advocates, I would like to recognize the members of the Rural Minds team who are the engine of the organization. Jeff Winton, Jim Modica, Patrick Fannin, Kim Herrig, Sammy Lancia, Julie Lux, Gail Mahoney, Karen McDermott, Adriel McMahon, Joe Modica, and Robert Russo. We are very grateful. Thank you for this award. Thank you so much, Chuck. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure um, to um, watch Rural Minds, um, their con contributions to the Star Coalition. It's been a pleasure to watch um, Jeff's leadership in this go through. Um, you know, I formerly had the honor of working with Jeff on the sponsor side of things, and it's been a big advocate for mental health research, and, and you guys are doing fantastic work. Thank you, Adam. So um, our next award, uh, we are now going to move on to the Site of the Year Award. And special thank you to all of those sites. Um, as I am gearing down here for my holiday break, I'd like to especially acknowledge um, people who are working in the clinics and the sites who are there. Um, this is, um, you know, as people are very aware, the holidays um, can be a very stressful time. And people who are working the, in the clinics um, oftentimes um, don't get a lot of time off or even any days off. There are under uh, both pressures from um, patients who need outreach during that time. And I will say um, the sponsor and CRO side, um, there's always database locks and year end deliverables that happen around this time of year. So um, a special acknowledgement to all of the sites that are attending right now for all of the hard work that you do, not only during the holiday season, but all year long. So the uh, 2022 uh, award winner was CNS Healthcare. And so therefore to present this year's award to the 2023 uh, award winner, um, Penny O'Neill from CNS Healthcare. Penny, are you here? And he is here. She just needs to unmute. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. So it is such a great honor to pass this award. Um, I know we were so pleased because we love STAR and everything that you do. So um, we take that as a great honor and happy to pass that along. So I'm delighted to present this year's Site of the Year Award to North Texas Clinical Trials, or NTXCT. North Texas Clinical Trials is an independent site located in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and is dedicated to providing quality data and trusted care. 
the NTX CT team's commitment to their pa patients was a determining factor in this year's decision. And the fact that their patients feel spoiled by them speaks volumes. Every month, NTX CT hosts events and does community outreach, which we all see every month in the STAR newsletter. Beyond that, NTX CT has really leaned into their STAR certification, doing the STAR 911 training, the auditory hallucination stimula simulation, empathy exercise, even making a poster from the community resources list to hang in your lobby. NTXCT leads all of the certified sites in their, in their research ambassadors, developing long-term relationships and helping the patients feel like active partners in their own healthcare journey, as well as finding new treatments for others. You're clearly committed to making sure that your patients come first above and beyond their participation in the research studies. And I'm very pleased to recognize North Texas Clinical Trials with the Star Site of the Year Award. Um, accepting the, the award on behalf of NTXCT is Je Jessica Anderson, the site director. So here's your award. It's beautiful, <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> and I know you're proud to receive it. So Jessica. Thank you. <clears throat> so we super appreciate, obviously, the award and the honor and everything about, um, you know, we, we acquired our site about two years ago, and I've been here before that for about 10, but kind of the mind map of what we wanted to do and the change that we wanted to make after acquiring it, one of those big things was being more involved with the community and being more consistently involved. We'd always gone to, like, events and stuff, but that was every couple months. So um, STARS really given us the opportunity to have, like, that consistent, you know, feeling of being involved and being in touch, and we don't actually have to do all that much extra work, which is neat. So um, <clears throat> outside of that, we like to be able to bring these extra resources and everything to our patients um, and to, you know, keep them in touch and as, you know, accessible to the to the research as possible. So that said, we're humbled and thrilled to receive the award. And it does make, you know, it very known and a, and a huge step towards the direction that we're trying to go to. So I feel like that's really reaffirming for us. And um, we're um, super happy to have it. So thank you so much. Great, and uh, congratulations again. Um, we are now going to be moving on to the Sponsor of the Year Award. Um, and, and really, this is something that's gained a lot of uh, media attention. 2023, um, you know, really was a, a great year for a lot of um, pharmaceutical development and, and innovations kind of in a number of different, um, you know, disease areas and indications, seeing big advances in Alzheimer's. Um, in, in gene therapy, et cetera. But um, what I've noticed here is, you know, there had certainly been a lull in a lot of, you know, pharmaceutical companies being involved in this area, which was incredibly unfortunate. And due to, you know, kind of the steadfastness of a lot of the scientists, uh, a lot of biotech companies, we've seen a resurgence recently of a number of, of sponsors investing more money into mental health research, developing new therapies for the first time um, in schizophrenia and, and bipolar disorders. We're seeing new mechanisms um, that are, are coming to patients, you know, really for the first time in over 50 years. We've been relying on a lot of the same, um, you know, therapeutic classes of drugs for a long time. So um, we're really at a very exciting time uh, for, for patients and families. And the fact that there's been more investment and more leadership on the part of, of sponsors and pharmaceutical companies and that you see them working more now directly with advocates and sites um, to bring these new therapies is, is really, you know, an attestment to all of the work that, that you do here and, and making uh, pharmaceutical research more efficient, which will again, bring more therapies to patients. So um, last year's award winner was Otska, and uh, we're gonna do things a little bit different here. We're, we're not going to uh, have Otska uh, hand the jacket off uh, directly because we have a special guest that's going to be joining us. Um, Cody Green is uh, an advocate himself and also um, very big on social media and has a lot of influencers and has been uh, working somebody living with schizophrenia himself to destigmatize uh, schizophrenia um, by sharing his own experiences. So 
Um, we have the, the honor of having Cody here, who is going to present um, the award for Sponsor of the Year. Um, so with that, uh, Cody. Co Cody is actually um, texting. I've been texting him and okay. uh, not seeing him here. Um, and I feel horrible about that because I really was so excited about this, but uh, these things do happen, so I apologize. Um, Would you like to move to the Lou Lagodnik Award and see if we can give Cody a little bit more yeah. time to present his? Yeah. If you All wouldn't right. mind doing that, Adam, that would be awesome. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, the uh, we'll move on to the Lou uh, Lagodnik Award. And um, last year's award winner was uh, Dr. Jill Harkley Friedman. Um, and um, Dr. Jill, if you would be so kind as to present this year's award. Sure, it's um, truly my honor and pleasure. So the Lou Ugodnik Award, or Louie, is all, the only star award that's given to an individual who's distinguished themselves in their exceptional dedication to mental health advocacy. And this, I'm gonna spill the beans first. This year's winner is Michelle Roberts. And Michelle is the Senior Director of Patient Advocacy at Teva Pharmaceutical. Hi, congratulations, I'm getting there. Um, it's such a pleasure to bestow this award on Michelle. When I received the recognition last year, I felt deeply honored. And when I learned more about Lou, I felt my awareness of how people can make the world a better place truly expanded. I never met Lou and I learned how he transformed his life and mental illness into positive impact for others. He improved so many people's lives through his advocacy, his humor, his compassion, and his magic. Even though I'm a gator and Lou is a cane, <laughs> I can appreciate his gifts. Uh, if anybody knew him, his uh, hurricanes were a very big part of his life, is what I'm gathering. Um, Michelle's advocacy work extended beyond traditional boundaries, utilizing social media platforms, public speaking engagements, and collaborations with mental health organizations to reach audi a diverse audiences and, provo and provo provoke conversations about mental health topics, including research. Her contributions lay in her extraordinary commitment to mental health patient advocacy, spending weeks, even months, on the road, engaging with patients, advocates, and stakeholders, forging relationships and cultivating a network of resources in support of Teva's mental health programs. But she didn't just work outward, she also worked diligently to ensure the voice of people living with illness into Teva's clinical trial design at all phases. This year, she has opened doors between multiple departments within Teva R&D and U.S. mental health advocacy groups for surveys and focus groups on what matters to people living with illness. Her input on Teva's Mental Health Moments video series features people that Michelle has developed relationships with, including Matthew Shapiro, who we know, of NAMI New York State. When Michelle hired Debbie, her new associate, she brought her into the STAR community, making sure she did the auditory hallucination simulation empathy exercise. And she got an overview of STAR programs so she could be an active participant in the STAR work on behalf of mental health research advocacy. Her empathy, her pursuit of insight, and her dedication to connecting individuals and organizations with shared goals has re resonated with communities nationwide. Her efforts in raising awareness about mental health, coupled with her genuine empathy for those affected, make her a fitting recipient for the Lou Ugodnik Award. And it seems to me that Lou would feel very grateful and honored that Michelle is receiving this award. So congratulations, Michelle. And would you like to say a few words? Thank you. Thank you so much, Jill. It means so much to receive um, this award, award from Jill, who's, whose work stand for itself in this field for many, many years. Uh, I have received my Louie, so I will hold it up. Uh, uh, thank you so much. I'm I'm highly honored, and I'm 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 most appreciative because this does come from the Star Coalition, and the Star Coalition is are true uh, believers in people who create 
meaningful change through community and partnerships. So much of my success this year really stems back to um, people that were introduced to me by the STAR Coalition. So I feel I should be giving the STAR Coalition uh, an achievement award. So just a few of the things that we were able to do together. I worked with Mallory early in the year and Mallory found a wonderful woman who shared her story about being a sister to a person living with schizophrenia as well as his caregiver. And uh, she agreed to be taped and we shared that story within Teva. And now it's part of the training procedure for any new medical science liaison that comes into Teva and uh, watches that video to understand what it really means from one person's perspective to be um, a caregiver of someone living with serious mental illness. So thank you, Mallory, for that. Erica has been very gracious and kind and introduced me to the great people at um, NAMI Texas and NAMI New York State. And then uh, Mallory and I were able to have lunch with, um, with uh, Matt Shapiro at NAMICON uh, with NAMI New York State. And out of that, just great things have happened. We've been doing great work with both groups on raising awareness on uh, schizophrenia and tardive dyskinesia and also um, sharing some of our clinical work and our research trials. So that's just, just, just really, really great. And those are just some examples of why it's su such an honor to work with the STAR Coalition who lives what they say that they live. And it's, they are dedicated in uh, reducing stigma, raising awareness on um, research opportunities, as well as uh, just educating the community about uh, serious mental illness and mental illness overall. So it's just a, a joy and a privilege. I would be remiss if I didn't thank some people at Teva. Uh, first of all, um, my leader, uh, Dr. Denisa Herdakova, who hired me for this role and trusted me to develop something new at Teva, uh, an advocacy position out of our U.S. medical affairs focused on, on research, education, and awareness. And uh, also uh, Dr. Stacy Finkbeiner and Dr. Pooja Gandhi, who I work with closely, um, medical directors for our movement disorder and mental health uh, groups here within Teva, fantastic individuals who are just as dedicated to science and research as they are to people living with illness and improving their lives through the work that we do here at Teva. And it's just an honor to wake up and work with them each day. And, and lastly, my husband, who really sacrificed as I spent probably just as many nights in hotel beds as I did beside him. And so, you know, when you, when you get to live your dream, and this really is a dream for me to do this type of work, uh, I really feel like it makes a difference as for others who care about you to sacrifice is, is just so appreciate, appreciated. I tried to get him to be on camera here with me today and he kindly refused. So, so thanks to all of you, uh, but especially thanks for the STAR Coalition. It's just an honor and privilege to, to walk this walk with you and beside you and, and be in it for all the good that we can do together. Thank you so much, Michelle. And Erica, I'll, I'll look to you. If, if Cody still has not been able to join us, I'm, I'm happy to, to jump in. And uh, given that the sponsor of the year is a sponsor that I'm very familiar with, I, I, I'm happy to uh, hand off the award, although I have nothing physical to hand off to, to this year's uh, winner. Is that still the plan? Um, yes, and I'm so sorry. I feel terrible about this because I was so excited for Cody to do this. And he was actually pretty excited also. So. Um, I'm, I'm bummed, but he's not going to make it. But Adam, I yeah. think that you're going to do an awesome job. <laughs> I, I, I know something about um, being on the sponsor side of of uh, this, and and actually, it's uh, the 2023 award winner 
Um, as I mentioned last year, Otsuko was the winner. Um, but I had the honor the year before that to um, hand off this award uh, when I was at Alchemy's um, to this year's award winner, uh, which is Karuna Therapeutics. And so, you know, a couple of things that I, I would like to say, Karuna is a, a company that when we handed this off two years ago uh, to Dr. Brennan and Dr. Wyden, um, I remember in their speech that, you know, they were very humble and, and, and very amazed because at the time, um, you know, Karuna was uh, just coming off of a, a phase two study in acute schizophrenia and was ramping up for uh, phase three work and considered themselves to be, you know, one of the, the smaller companies that was really um, just trying to, you know, get their, their foot place in here. Uh, fast forward a couple of years and now are, you know, absolutely seen as leaders, not only in terms of scientific achievement, but in the work that they have done in advocacy. They have um, really always, um, and I had mentioned this in my, my award ceremony a couple of years ago, put the patient first. And that's very uh, apparent in um, the ways that they work internally with their staff. When you speak with people at Karuna, they speak about the patient. They're very familiar with the STAR Coalition, um, the endpoints that they put in. So it's, it's not even just in terms of, you know, when you're developing a study and trying to come up with a mechanism that's never been used before and challenging the status quo and bringing new uh, therapeutics and mechanisms to patients, but also thinking about what's of interest to the patients going beyond just, for example, a PAN score in terms of collecting information about um, how the patient is doing and looking at innovative uh, ways to collect information for, for people living with schizophrenia. So Karuna has really been, um, you know, kind of emerged as uh, from, from a smaller company to a leader in term, both scientifically as well as in their advocacy for patients. So I'm very happy uh, this year. Um, I believe we have Dr. Andrew Miller uh, from Karuna Therapeutics that's going to accept this year's award for Sponsor of the Year, Dr. Miller. Great. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, it's obviously a, a pleasure to get that introduction. It's very flattering um, and wanted to also extend congratulations to all the other award recipients this year. And of course, Specifically, thank also the STAR Coalition. I um, had the chance to actually meet Erica in person at our Patient Advocacy Summit here um, a couple of months ago. Thank you so much for all the work that you do on a daily basis as a coalition, and Erica specifically, to improve and educate about clinical research and mental health, drive education awareness about schizophrenia and about mental illness more broadly. Um, you know, certainly we know how important the advocacy community is and people with lived experience are in driving change in education, awareness, stigma, and policy to change how mental health is viewed. And we're certainly humble to be a part of a community of stakeholders that shares a passion for improving the lives of people with mental illness and, and people with schizophrenia. And we're hoping that we can continue to learn from each of you about how we can better serve patients and how we can accomplish more together. Um, as Adam mentioned, uh, the founder and chief operating officer of Karuna, so I've been toiling away at this for quite some period of time. It uh, goes back uh, a little over 14 years at this point. Um, and the idea of founding Karuna was fundamentally first and foremost to you know, try to introduce a new class of, of medicine to treat schizophrenia. Um, and help patients, help caregivers, care partners. Um, that's why the company was was founded. The the name Karuna is actually a Sanskrit word. Uh, the most uh, sort of the closest English translation would be an act to reduce the suffering of others or or compassion. That's certainly what drives us. What has driven us to where we are today, and what continues to drive us forward. Um, you know, if you ask me, fourteen years ago, where did we want to be from a company perspective? The answer to that is right here um, in a community of people that share a passion for improving lives um, and working towards, you know, unfortunately, a group of patients who don't have the resources, don't have the advocacy, don't have the attention that, that they deserve. Um, and hopefully we can be a part of improving what the overall mental health landscape and, and treatment landscape looks like. Um, I really want to reinforce our commitment to working in this area. It's our passion. Um, it's what we exclusively work on. Uh, and certainly want to, you know, give a big shout out and thank you to all of my colleagues who've signed up to sort of join on this journey. Uh, it's certainly a huge team effort. Obviously, I had the chance to hear from 
uh, Steve Brandon and Peter Wyden um, two years ago. Um, hopefully you'll be hearing more from us going forward, but just so thankful that we could be here, that we could be doing the work that we're doing. It's our passion. Um, and so thank you to, to everyone on this call for, for listening. And, and thanks again to the Star Coalition for this recognition. Certainly couldn't be more, more honored by that. Great. Thank you so I'll, much. I'll one, I'll, I have one last comment, which is, Adam, you said something about passing a jacket, which I don't have your jacket, but I did get this in the mail. Oh, okay. from, so it's not it's <laughs> not a sparkly jacket. I would have traded that for this, but uh, it's a consolation press. Careful, careful what you ask for. I come to Boston quite often, so there might be one coming by your office. Uh, well, with that, um, I just wanted to, again, thank every individual here. I mean, we were able to highlight, you know, some key award winners. But, again, thank you to everybody. Um, it, it's been a, a really busy and successful 2023. So, um, again, on behalf of everybody at the Star Coalition, thank you for all of the, the fantastic that work that you do. Um, and and um, let's keep things going here in 2024. Looking forward to a lot more successes and a lot more work um, on, on behalf of patients. And Erica, if there isn't anything else, I think that we could probably conclude this year's award ceremony. Yay. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, all the winners. Um, awesome job. I'm so thrilled and again grateful that you guys are all here and we're all together um everybody happy holidays um and and we'll see you next year right <laughs> happy holidays bye bye thank you thank you, everyone bye. thank you happy holidays bye. thanks bye <laughs>